So I assume there's like a a burglar or something. You did see him wrong, sir. Or something serious. Something. I didn't mean it like that. Uh, just his badge number. In this Crime of the Week, Crime Stoppers and the El Paso Police Department are looking to identify two men who stole 28 catalytic converters to Sable in multiple school buses. On Wednesday, November 23rd at 3.46 a.m., two men went onto the Region 19 Head Start Service Center at 9778 Kenworthy. The men stole various catalytic converters from several vehicles, including school buses. Two days later, the men returned and took additional catalytic converters. In total, the men stole 28 catalytic converters and caused an estimated 100000 in damage and loss to Region 19. Security video captured the men walking onto the property. Both men were covering their faces and wearing gloves. Investigators are certain that someone will recognize the pair of thieves that disabled multiple school buses. Anyone with any information on the identity of these men should call Crime Stoppers of El Paso at 566-8477. That's 566-TIPS. Hello, everybody. This is Andre, Horizon City News. As everybody can tell from my uh, recent video that I put out within the last uh, 24 hours, there was an incident that happened behind the Grand China Buffet on Viscount, for all those all those people who watch who are local, you know what I'm talking about. It's on the east side. Anyway, um, <clears throat> Ruben and I, uh, he has a channel named Rights and Lefts, in case you didn't know. Ruben and I were behind the Grand China Buffet. We were not cop watching or, you know, having anything to do with law enforcement in any way. And then this incident uh, just made its way in our direction. Um, it happened suddenly like a lot of things do. And, uh, the reason I'm making this quick video is just to show, as you can see here, see how that officer just lifted up that piece of cardboard. Now that might seem really, really petty to some people, but as far as I'm concerned, that can be considered a search, even as something as small as that. Um, anything he did without touching anything, that's considered a plain view search, uh, legally, as far as the lawyers and judges are concerned. But once he starts rummaging, which I think that my question about him having a warrant probably stopped him from doing uh, any further rummaging. But once he starts like lifting up any type of item that can seal something, in my opinion, that's a search. All right, she's going to your truck, Ruben. They're looking at mine, too. You got a warrant, officer? Do you have a warrant? You just went inside my truck, buddy. I got it on camera, lady. I'm just saying, you're not supposed to go in there without a warrant. That's all I'm saying. How am I interfering? I'm just, he went inside my truck. Please stop interfering. It's open. I'm staying on public sidewalk, it's officer. Public, my pickup truck? Please stop interfering. How am I interfering? I'm staying on a public sidewalk here. Okay, I'm telling you, these officers are, are doing their jobs and you're calling them out. Don't yeah, but I, I'm allowed. Don't isn't, isn't speech legal? I'm, I'm letting you know. Don't interfere again. But it, it's, it's, it's a, a physical. battle of wits, sir. You'll lose every time, I guarantee it. I'm sorry? It's a battle of wits. Now I'm just saying something to you. I'm talking to you right now. Well, I'm just saying. I think you need to study Texas Penal Code 38.15, sir. Tell me what it is, and then I'll tell you that it's open to the public, which allows us to look in there, right? Yes, no, because unless, do you have a warrant? Have a good night, sir. If you have a warrant. Continue on, and I'm telling you, you're going to get arrested for interference. No, I'm talking to you. I'm not talking to them. No, I'm interfering. You're interfering. I'm trying to get this stuff done. You think I'm here for you? I, like I said, I'm just standing here. But I can talk, right? No, you can't. I can't talk. Uh, what? <laughs> this guy's out of his mind, man. He said I can't talk. <laughs> this is crazy, man. 
I, I can't stand on a sidewalk and talk? What the hell is that? You need to relax, Sergeant. Now, as you can see here, I'm looking down at the sidewalk and I'm uh, having a back and forth, uh, I guess, argument with this uh, police sergeant here who's essentially threatening to arrest me for what, he, for what he claims is called interference with public duties. But I know that that is not what the law says. But of course, he has all the power to pull out his handcuffs and arrest me. So I have to really watch what I say because the uh, El Paso Police Department, especially his particular regional command center, the Pebble Hills Regional Command, uh, has proven uh, repeatedly now, you know, on more than one occasion from 2019 to today, uh, that they, him and his people will arrest me for interference with public duties simply for speaking. And now in this particular situation, it's even more egregious in my mind because I wasn't even near anything that they could even possibly claim was physically interfering with anything. Here I am standing on this elevated sidewalk. There's Ruben right there. We're just standing on a sidewalk. Our vehicles are down below here in this parking lot, which is down below us. And this sergeant is still claiming that if we speak, if we say anything that even just distracts him or just distracts his people, if we just, uh, you know, disrupt their, their mental thought process, their, I guess their fragile, um, delicate, I'm trying to use words that would describe, you know, how they how they operate mentally here, because obviously that's what he's telling me, in my opinion, is that they, they can't, you know, operate. They can't do their jobs mentally if someone is even distracting them, because uh, essentially that's what he's claiming, in my opinion, is that I can't stand on a sidewalk and speak because that that interrupts his his thought process and, it, and his train of thought and, and the train of thought of his people. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's basically what my interpretation of what he said was, is that interference with public duties includes speaking, that I can't stand on a sidewalk and say what's on my mind. It's not like I did it in a loud voice and, you know, was waking up people in those apartment buildings or anything like that. I was in a normal tone of voice and just, uh, in my opinion, he didn't like the particular question that was being asked because the question I asked was, do you have a warrant officer? When I was speaking to that officer who was down below, um, you know, uh, he was doing a plain view search of my truck. And then for a brief moment there, he started lifting up a piece of cardboard to inspect items that were inside the truck. Um, and so I started questioning, does he have a warrant? And, you know, what's, what's the purpose of the warrantless search is basically what I'm getting at. And just even doing that, I was threatened with arrest. Uh, for speaking. So you guys tell me what you think in the comments section below. Um, I know a lot of people that watch this channel do not like me very much and that they are, you know, quote unquote, on the side of law enforcement and they consider me to be causing trouble and argumentative and, you know, a cop hater and all sorts of stuff. But I think this is a perfect situation where you really have to step back and, and look at what's going on here, even if you don't particularly like me personally, because just this particular situation, you can see how even when I'm standing so far away from any of the police activity that there's no way anybody can claim I'm interfering, I still get threatened with arrest for interference with public duties, which, by the way, is Texas Penal Code 38.15. A lot of these officers, including this sergeant, they simply don't know the law or they pretend to not know it. Both are bad choices, but 
At the end of the day, they abuse their authority and arrest people like me and Ruben for interference public duties, even when we have not triggered a violation of that Texas Penal Code. Um, it happened to me in September 2021 with another sergeant from this particular El Paso, Texas Police Department Regional Command, which is called the Pebble Hills Regional Command. It's on the east side. And um, yeah, this has been an ongoing thing since I started my channel in October of 2018. I got my first arrest from this particular uh, El Paso, Texas Police Department Regional Command. It was from Officer Puentes. Uh, at the time, I don't know if he's still there, but at the time he was a police officer at the uh, Pebble Hills Regional Command. He arrested me for interference with public duties simply because after he took his vehicle spotlight and put it into my camera lens, um, and I came up to him and I asked him for his name and badge number, he claimed that that was interference. So he arrested me for interference with public duties. I don't see how that was interference, but... He arrested me, made me go through the whole criminal justice system. And uh, I also got arrested for resisting arrest simply because uh, I backed up when he started charging at me. They considered that resisting. And so, yeah, I mean, they, they can quickly make up any laws they want out here. And it's really bad. And that's why people like me and Ruben, we create our YouTube channels to show the rest of the country and the rest of the world what goes on here. Um. Yeah, there's, there's laws written on paper, and then these police officers are making up their own version of the law and abusing their authority routinely. It's the norm. It is, it's not the exception. It's the norm. Um, I'll just leave it at that. Why do you keep doing that? Fuck you. Stop doing that. What's your problem? I'm still waiting for your black eye. You're the one escalating things with your spotlight. You can play all the games you want. Hey, what's your name and badge number? Officer? Officer, what's your name and badge number? I'm asking you a question. What's your name and badge number? Officer, can you hear me? Are you deaf? What's your name and badge number? You got a spotlight in my face for no reason. What's the problem? Seriously, why are you doing this? What's your problem? What, what, what is the deal? What, what is the purpose of doing that? Just to blind my camera for no reason? Why, why do you not, why do you have a problem with cameras? You put on a uniform to, to serve the public. Come on, here, sir. No, yes, I'll stand right here. No, sir, go ahead and turn it Back off. Back up, okay. dude. No, sir, go ahead and turn it off from you, okay? I didn't do nothing. Sir, go ahead and turn it off. I didn't okay. do nothing. Dude, what the fuck? But that, that's uh, what I wanted to start another topic of discussion with is this, this uh, warrantless search. It was very brief. The police officer that lifted up the item inside my truck, I believe that he would have done more. And in fact, he might have actually done a little bit more. I couldn't see though, because I had turned around to speak to that sergeant. But from what I did catch on camera, he did lift up a piece of cardboard. That might seem really petty and trivial to some people, like I said, but... Um, I believe that he was, if I had not asked him if he had a warrant, he was going to continue to start rummaging through the back of my pickup truck. And um, my only question to the El Paso Police Department was, does he have a warrant and or, you know, is there some sort of, you know, legal exception to the Fourth Amendment as to why he was searching the back of my pickup truck? Because there's all sorts of 
exceptions to the Fourth Amendment, which would allow the police to search the back of a pickup truck. And that's all I was asking is, does he have a warrant or some sort of exception to the warrant requirement? And um, that got me with, you know, that got me threatened with arrest. <laughs> Just asking that type of question got me threatened with arrest for asking a question while standing on a public sidewalk, you know, and I was without question a considerable distance from any of the police activity. I was not physically interfering in any way. And there was no threat or even possible thought that I could have started physically interfering with the police in any way. Um, everything I did was verbal and I was still threatened with the rest. So I'll leave it at that. Anyway, happy new year, everybody. Uh, you can always reach out to me. I have that in the description box below. Any questions or comments, please put them in the uh, comment section below. And, um, yeah, we'll just keep making more stories and bringing up more topics for 2023. And this was a very uh, strange situation, but, uh, you know, things happen. And me and Ruben were just uh, talking about, you know, weird situations that can happen. And this thing just fell out of the sky, you know, like a lot of things in life. So it is what it is. Anyway. Again, Happy New Year, guys. I'll be in touch. Thanks for watching Horizon City News.